Good morning, folks. We've got three top science stories today, all relevant to Earth's disaster cycle. We'll also take a look at the full breadth of the recent comet on satellites, and we're starting, as always, with the last 24 hours on our star. It was a very calm day, despite the sunspot situation looking pretty gnarly, the solar flares are not accompanying them. We have dropped back down into C-class range after furiously shooting up to near X-class two days ago. The plasma filaments have remained exceptionally quiet as well. well. Let's peek in on those sunspots. Former flare maker is departing up north, while the biggest active region on the south, directly facing Earth, could be developing near the caboose. Red negative magnetism invading that trailing portion of the sunspot group, mixing development on watch here today. Folks, this is Comet Atlas. We're going to watch the full visibility sequence on satellites here. It was the brightest object since Comet Neat in 2003, just ahead of Comet Lovejoy in 2011. Now it's visible, leaving Soho Lasco C3 and heading into stereo ahead HI1. Will be visible here another day or two if you want to check it out. It is showing a few signs of disintegration following its perihelion, and even if it stays together, its orbit has it leaving for many, many generations. First article up today is about how humans just survive. We are pretty darn resilient given that our primary advantage on this planet is cerebral, and sure not our massive size, speed, strength, gills, talons, teeth, and wings. It's a good article here on how no matter how bleak, bet on people. Up next, folks, I really hope there's some of you here long enough to know that the entire solar system is shifting and that it's not just our planet. About how Mars climate change is dwarfing what we're seeing here on Earth, and now we know it is continuing. They're learning that the rate of polar ice loss at Mars is faster than they imagine, things continuing to speed up throughout the solar system. Last but not least, folks, this is a good one. We usually look at the major auroras and solar storms, suggesting that what caused them was moderate only, acting major because of Earth's magnetic field, weakening in the ongoing pole shift. Well, the other side of that table is when we get some solar storm effects on Earth and nobody can figure out where they came from. Not a flare, not in the solar wind, not the interplanetary magnetic field, like getting a black eye and missing a tooth because you dreamed someone punched you. Geez, magnetic pole shift leaving Earth much more vulnerable day after day. Folks, have you planned your trip out to observe a ranch this year? The pole shift mini conferences happen once a month. There are meetup days, grand opening in April with Dr. Robitaille, kings of catastrophism with Dr. Dunning in May. Seriously, come out and see us. It starts at observerranch.com. We greatly appreciate your support. We'll do this all again tomorrow right here but right now it's 5 30 a.m in the new valley of the sun eyes open no fear be safe everyone